Reminds me of um, that line that uh, from Jude Towers when the uh, when the Haradrim soldier, Haradrim, yeah, the Haradrim soldier, um, falls in front of uh, in front of the hobbits, in front of Sam and Frodo. Uh, in the movie, the, the lines from Faramir. Uh, in the book, it's uh, a version of it's from Sam. Um, they say, "I wonder who he was, uh, this this man, and I wonder if he was truly evil at heart, or if he was." Uh, or what lies and deceptions or uh, or false hope drove him here? Um, ending with that that somber war will make corpses of us all. And that really it it it's very poignant, very that especially it's a very poignant illustration both in the book and in the film because there's a dead body lying in front of him and it's. it's it's a young man. It's a, he's, he's a boy, probably a teenager. Uh, he's going to war uh, against Gondor for, Saur uh, for Sauron. In this case, Helmsley. No, it's the Haradrim, so it was Sauron. It was Sauron, not Saruman. Um, but it's one of the most poignant lines in, in, the, um, in the Two Towers, which is full of just brilliant writing like that. The film, even. If maybe even more so than the book. Um, the Two Towers might be my least favorite book uh, of the three uh, because it does drag quite a bit. Uh, I mean, Tolkien has a reputation for dragging and environmental descriptions and such. Two Towers may be most, most of all. Um, but there was a lot of stuff that was, that was fiddled with a little bit for the films uh, that I think was done very, very well. Uh, between that and Sam's speech right near the end in Osgiliath, why about why uh, why heroes go on? The old stories, the ones that really mattered, that whole thing. All of that, um, that as well. But the the the, the point with the uh, the dead Haradrim and Josephine's story here of the uh, competing bard who died senselessly here. It puts a point on the tragedy of conflict. The tragedy of conflict in both cases is not, it's not even that people die, or we lose people in the process, or even that they die for noble purposes or noble goals. Is that It's that the people who die are not the ones in conflict, aren't the ones responsible, and aren't the ones who will ultimately benefit from victory except in the most grave cases of self-defense. Yes, fine. Your average Gondorian soldier defending Minas Tirith will benefit from driving away the armies of Mordor. And yes, fine, your average Inquisition soldier will benefit from closing the breach and preventing demons from swarming the world. Fine. Yes. But under most circumstances, a case like this, where you have... One bard here, Josephine, who is protecting her patron. And she's she's a noble. She's a noble. She's highborn herself. It's not like uh, she needs a patron. It's not like she needs someone to uh, to pay her way through and, and give her a place in the Orlesian nobility and all of the, the patron-client relationship type stuff that you would expect. No, no. It's, it is purely for kids who think this is exciting. But then, in their pursuit of excitement and glory and stories and all of those things, they wind up, uh, they wind up losing losing their lives and taking each other's lives. And in a case like this, especially, it had nothing to do with them. They were friends, or at least acquaintances. But rather, it was over a squabble between nobles. Who decided not to settle it themselves. Take a war. Any war. And you have, fundamentally, nobles, politicians, leaders, whatever, who have a dispute. And those leaders of any sort have decided that instead of settling the matter themselves, or at least directly, will instead 
either conscript or find volunteers of dozens, hundreds, thousands, or in the 20th century, we had plenty of cases of millions of otherwise innocent young people throwing their lives away for this conflict between usually angry old men. Uh, this this was brought up uh, in um, uh, Dave Smith's podcast. Um, part of the problem. Where he brings up um, he brought up, and this was last week, I think. It was an episode, episode or two ago. Where he brings up the fact that our current conflict, the current conflict, not our our current conflict, but the current conflict between Russia and Ukraine that, that, that the U.S. is meddling with is misstated. Because it's not a conflict between Russia and Ukraine that the U.S. is meddling with. It is a conflict between Vladimir Putin, the people of Ukraine, and Joe Biden. And that um, when they were put, when they were taking apart and looking at Joe Biden's speech from the uh, from last week, when he announced sanctions and he announced uh, not buying Russian oil, they pointed out something I think that's very profound. It's that Joe Biden is doing this to punish Putin, to make him suffer. As he has stated, he stated this very plainly very straightforwardly, very directly in the speech. The chances of Vladimir Putin suffering himself, him actually suffering, from sanctions imposed by the US is basically zero. He'll be fine. Joe Biden will be fine. He's not going to suffer from this. He's probably going to profit from it, at least personally, he and his loved ones, and especially if there's any, if there's a track record of his, uh, his family profiting from Ukraine. In any case, though, it's not it's not he who's going to suffer. It's ordinary people in Russia and ordinary people in the U.S., us and them, who are also just realistically just us over there. And it's that powerful people like this, politically powerful people, will always necessarily fight each other by proxy. And so the proxies are the ones who get injured by it, not them. Now, if it were a matter of, if it were a matter of, let's say, let's take this example, Josephine and her bard friend, her other bard friend, who was sent to assassinate a, uh, a rival, a rival noble. That's at least closer. Because one noble has a conflict with another. He finds someone, he, this guy finds somebody to kill this guy, and that would get rid of the conflict. The only reason anyone else was involved at all is because this guy just wasn't very good at killing people. So he found somebody who was decent at it. And this guy happened to have a buddy, Josephine, who didn't want him killed for whatever reason. And so fought the guy that this guy sent. And so it became a little proxy affair, but it didn't need to be. It could have just been this guy either going up and stabbing this guy or sending somebody to stab this guy. It was that simple. Really straightforward. And it can be. And again, I think that that, that 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 the more directly politicians fight one another without involving the populations that they that they control or in a lot of cases tyrannize, the more directly that these these conflicts occur, the more civilized it can possibly be. Fighting one another directly without trying to involve millions of other people. And in our, I mean, let's be realistic in our current case, that can perfectly well involve the annihilation of the human race, because these are two people who have their fingers hovering over big red buttons, so to speak. Almost certainly won't come to that, but, well, we can only hope and pray, but, um, <laughs> but it also just can be the fact that, uh, no, it won't come to that, because that would, inv that would involve them actually suffering. Probably won't. They don't want to do that. They don't want to suffer from this. They want to both profit from it, and they probably both will. It's it's the, the most disgusting element, the greatest tragedy of warfare, is that it's... The, 
I mean, it's that old quote from Nash, I think it was. Uh, the war isn't hell. Almost everyone in war is innocent, except for a few of the brass at the top. They're just getting everyone else around them killed. It, it, that's the tragedy, really. So. Let's see how Josephine moved on from this. Hmm? From bard to diplomat is quite a change in direction. I was headed down that path for some time already. That night merely crystallized it. In all the commotion, uh, forgive me, I don't believe I ever thanked you for helping me with this. Hold on to it. Don't lose sight of why you came here. I will never forget you helped save the house of Montillier, Inquisitor. And should you ever visit Antiva, stories of the welcome we'll give you will be told for years. All right. I might need to clip that, that little part there. I don't know. We'll see. If you think it's worth clipping, uh, someone feel free to. Uh, or let me know. And I will. They're as calm as they can be. All right. Let's see. What do we do next? 